The thing that I want to make really, really clear is that there isn't a formula for business success or entrepreneurial success. You can't look at someone and go, okay, if I do these courses and then I do this is a next step and this is a next step and this is a next step, that's going to guarantee success. Like that's, that's not how it goes if you want to have your own business. Good morning everyone, we're shooting a day in the life this morning, it's Friday, been back to work for a full week. I can't believe it's Friday. Okay, I've got, I wanna ask you guys for a little bit of help um, before I get into my day. And um, <clears throat> like, again, you guys have been commenting so much and telling me how much you love my content, which is so appreciated. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. The entire media team thanks you. And I love that you guys have been giving shout outs to the media team too. They love hearing it, I love hearing it. Um, and so I just want to ask you guys for a little bit of help because you know that we've all been busting our asses making this content. So if you guys could um, like this video, share it, push it out to Facebook, link it to your friends, push it out on Instagram. Um, yeah, just spread the, spread the love around. Share the love, spread it around like it's Nutella. That would be awesome. We'd be so grateful to you guys for doing that. It would mean the world to me and my team um, because obviously we want to keep this whole thing going. I want to keep this whole thing going and we want to keep this whole thing going and we definitely need your help for that. So much appreciated and if you do share it, leave me a comment below. Let me know that you've done that um, so that I can comment back and say thank you. Okay, that's it. Now we're gonna go. <laughs> we're showing up to Vanilla Salon. I'm very curious to see what has been done. I haven't seen it. It's been in construction for three weeks since the last time I've seen it. So I don't know if a lot has been done, a little bit's been done, but they're supposed to wrap up next week. So it should be pretty interesting. How was your trip? It was awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was right so on. good. It was like the perfect honeymoon. No kidding. Yeah, it no. was. it was really good. Cool, so how's it going? It's, it's going. You know, are you guys gonna try and do like advertise a grand opening, right? He has clients on the 18th. You have clients on the 18th. Which okay. is? Both of my stylists have clients. Okay, sounds good. Well, <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell you right now, we'll be working for the, we'll, we'll have it done. You'll be able to, you'll be cutting hair on the 18th. All right, right? It is what take it that. Is. Huh? Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> there you All go. Right. So just to recap, so ceilings are gonna be done today. Yeah. And then partial, Electrical is happening on Monday. Yes. Plumbing has passed, and so framing will be Tuesday. Yep. The mirrors are in production. It's gonna feel. The statement. It's gonna be the statement. Well. well the line too. Yeah, yeah. 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 One of these statements. Okay. Site visit is was good. Okay. I am happy that we showed up there because there were definitely a whole bunch of things that we caught. Like the light fixtures are supposed to be white. The ones that are on site are silver. The um, placement of some of the rough-ins for the electrical are in, is not in the right spot. We had to fix that. So those are all the kinds of things that a designer will fix on site. So are we like 110 away from the wall? Oh, gotta... yeah, no. This one doesn't work. I'm thinking that looks awfully close to the wall. Um, okay, I'll move it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. The ceiling should be yeah, because nine. Right. Sorry. Yeah, okay. So because of this duct work, right? Yeah. It's lower. But yeah, it sounds like we're losing eight inches from the ceiling. Yeah, we're like seven foot nine. So what's what's 32 inches top counter vanity height? Which size is that mirror? Can we pull up the mirror spec just quickly? Two foot 10. 32? 32 inch diameter. So for an accessible... Uh, your two no, because you need two foot three clear. Two foot... Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. It happens on every single job site. And you know, it's so funny because sometimes if a client has never done a construction project before, people expect that things are going to go perfectly. Yeah. Like you've done the drawings and so they're just, you know, you're just going to execute and it's all going to go perfectly. And um, just depending on different types of personalities, like I've had clients like freak out because they didn't know that the duct work was going to be um, as low it was 
as it is. Yeah, it's like if you don't know, then it can be such a like scary process or you think that it's just because one little thing gets installed wrong. Like, oh my God, everybody's doing a bad job. How did the designers not catch that? Or how did, what's wrong with these contractors? But honestly, there's, it's the norm. In order to call for final, yeah. what would be, like what needs to be done in order for final? Do you have health coming in here? We don't need health. Yeah. Do we need health? I don't think we need health. No, you wouldn't have got the permit. You don't need health. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, the plans have to go to health. Yeah. But I don't think we yeah, need health. Oh no, no, we know. Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, it sh no, it should be fine. It should be fine. There's so many moving parts. It's, it's totally the norm. Yeah. You know, I, it was funny. I was thinking about, um, people really like the last video, hey? Yeah. There's yeah, a lot, the there's, yeah. About interior design. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of comments. Um, people just like the vibe of that video. And uh, <laughs> I think it maybe came through Instagram. One person sent me a message um, just saying something along the lines of like, they said, but I'm not sure whether I should go to business school or design school. And they're like, I'm worried that if I go to business school, I won't have the interior design background that I need to have an interior design business. Right. Or if I go to interior design school, then I'm worried that I won't have the business background that I need. Right. Yeah, so what do you... Like, an interior designer is a profession. You're not going to go and open, like, a medical practice mm -hmm. if you're not That's a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So... I mean, if you want to go and launch a product or get into something else, that's different than offering a professional service. So I just want to make that distinction. Like I wouldn't just like open an interior design shop. Yeah. Unless you were partnering with an interior designer. Yeah. Unless you're partnering with an interior designer. Totally different. Yeah. If you're partnering with an interior designer um, and one of you is going to take care of the business and one of you is going to take care of, of design completely different story that's actually like would an amazing fit um but i wouldn't just go into a serviced a professional service-based business and not know anything about that service base that it just seems like a bad idea and then i don't mean to be like negative nelly about this stuff but i i'm not necessarily like an advocate for business school and you know i kind of feel like i want to make this comment on my YouTube channel because so many of you guys have been asking me like what courses should I take how do I get to where you are um, you know what do I need to do do you have any recommendation and like the thing that I want to make really really clear is that there isn't a formula for business success or entrepreneurial success you can't look at someone and go okay if I do these courses and then I do this is a next step and this is a next step and this is a next step that's going to guarantee success like that's that's not how it goes if you want to have your own business in one of my previous videos where I talked about you learn by doing like that is the cold hard truth and nobody nobody can give you a formula or a roadmap for this so I just want to make that clear because I feel like a lot of people have been asking me like you know, how do I do it? How do I do it? What's, how do I get there? And there's no formula. There's no textbook for this. And there's no guarantee either. So on to the next meeting number two. I am checking out a new project, a potential new project. I won't say too much about it yet because it's, uh, we don't have it, but I am excited about this one. I am excited that I'm at a point in my career where I can be a little bit more selective about the types of projects that I want to take on. It's really important to me that the projects that we do take on are like a really, really good fit. A recap. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. That one looks sweet. That one would be really sweet. Is she like pretty much sold on you guys? You, you never really know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, totally, right? Okay, do you, well, why don't you stand here for a second and I'm gonna see if I can get Oscar to go to the bathroom. Okay. Oh, I was listening to a podcast this morning. It was that How I Built This by Guy, uh, someone, it's an awesome podcast. Oh, yeah. I would highly recommend it. Okay. Um, for anyone that's into like business and entrepreneur stuff.
he's interviewed Mark Cuban and Richard Branson from oh, yeah. Virgin and the people who were behind Kate Spade and the people who were behind Crate and Barrel and just the people, the person behind Tinder. Like he's interviewed so many people who have gotten these businesses off the ground and it's so interesting to hear their stories and how they did it. And almost every one has a story about like success and failure yeah. and how getting off the ground wasn't easy. Anyways, this woman got this online framing business off the ground, built it so that it was huge. And one of her big influences was her dad, who, you know, he had this little tugboat business that would tug all these big boats, and she watched him work really hard. So Guy, he asked her, how was it to watch your dad be an entrepreneur or be a boss? Because back in their day, and I don't know how old he is, but there wasn't this culture of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And she said, well, yeah, I always knew I was going to be a boss, but it wasn't like I thought I was going to get all this glory from being the boss. She thought, okay, I know how much responsibility I'm going to shoulder yeah. over the next little while. And to me, that really struck a chord with me because I feel like there's so many people who think about the idea of working for themselves or being a boss or being an entrepreneur because of all the glory that's attached yeah. to it. And people don't realize just how much responsibility comes with that job title and that role. You have the ability to define your life, but you also have an immense amount of pressure to keep the whole thing going. This looks very 80s. Yeah, I know. I like it. Who would have thought that 80s would come back, hey? They always so come back. It always comes back, so, yeah, so soon. <laughs> yeah. 90s was the best. Yeah. Hip hop, yeah. girl bands, boy bands. Yeah. Okay, so we're at the home stretch here, picking out paint colors just for the bathroom, and I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of some of the finishes going into the salon. It's gonna have beautiful polished concrete floors. There's gonna be lots of white and then this really cool teak color. So it's gonna be stunning. When did paint get so technical? Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been 10 years. It's all different sheens. They have high gloss, semi gloss, soft gloss, pearl, eggshell, low luster, flat, and matte. What's your go-to? <laughs> My go-to would be like flat or matte on the wall. I like flat paint colors. I feel like the color, funny enough, um, is a lot richer when it's a flat sheen. When it's shiny, you get like a reflective quality and so you don't get the depth in the color. So if you're doing like a really dark color and you go flat or matte, then it just kind of absorbs all the light and you get yeah. nice depth to it tip for you guys. There are two sides of a coin. It's like nothing great comes without a sacrifice or as good as it is, it's equally as bad. Yeah. So yeah, you have a huge amount of pressure and you're forced to make decisions that are just business decisions. Like that's the thing that whenever I come up against that in my own business, it always catches me off guard a little bit, um, even though I'm a business owner, is that sometimes things, moments will come up where I'm forced to make a business decision. It's not the decision that my heart wants, it goes against sometimes my values it um, goes against, you know, like friends or family or whatever, but I'm forced to make that decision because your business trumps everything. Knock on wood, I can't even tell you guys how excited I am for my renovation to start. 
Um, if you saw the last episode of Bonafide, 